time is 4.50 and we're now heading off to Shimkent and we considered that the best time to leave because there is no traffic at this time and otherwise you know we're now driving um, on Riskulov street and normally during the day in the morning especially in the evening it's it's uh, the traffic is really heavy and we're gonna be going through the uh, market area which is called Old Tenarda and that's also very intense in terms of traffic so um, if you want to travel by car from Almaty to Shimkent uh, it's one thing that you need to take care of you need to consider the time of your departure from Almaty the route the navigator says uh, it will take 7 hours 39 minutes to get from Almaty to Shimkent in distance, distance wise that's 666 kilometers and we have already escaped Almaty and uh, that was really quick <laughs> because there was no traffic so now we're using this app which is Google Maps and this navigation system is telling us that the, the trip will take 8 hours 38 minutes and but there is also another app um, navigation app that we use here in Kazakhstan it is called two keys or double keys and uh, if you can see if we compare it tells us that the trip's gonna take two hours more. I have checked uh, the route itself and it looks identical, so I don't know why it's giving us this uh, difference. But in time, but we'll see, we'll try to figure out um, as we go. So our final destination for today is actually not Shimkent, it's Turkistan. and it will be just plain, flat, nothing special, no trees. Uh, now we want to get some hot water to make tea or coffee. Let's see if we can manage to find it here. But it's still too early. It's 6 a.m. now and I guess everything is closed at the moment. So now we are really close to Bishkek that, that's here on the map but we're gonna be just driving by the road is not bad but not great and the scenery is still boring if not for the mountains on the other side it's just flat and boring well that's typical for the south of Kazakhstan emptiness looks like a desert we can see here now that oh my god sometimes the road is like this you gotta be careful because there are some construction work going on they're making it wider so right now it's just two lanes both directions but I don't know anytime soon it's gonna be wider and um, maybe they will change also the quality of the road. Uh, now we're using this, you can see the icon, that's Tuki's uh, navigation app and it shows us the speed limits. So that's very convenient if you don't want to get a ticket. There is another plus for this app that it works offline too. 
check it out. We have just overcome uh, just a segment of the road where the speed limit was 50. I guess due to the conditions of the road, of the surface of the road. And ahead there is another one. And it's convenient that this app is always uh, showing us where the speed limit is different. Looks like we're gonna cross to the other side. technical inspection that can be needed just in case is uh, originally made of concrete but now we can see that they're fixing the road surface and now they're doing it just with the asphalt <laughs> here they see that T letter that's uh, a 
capital letter for our currency, local currency, which is Tingye, and that's supposed to be a toll road. And uh, I have to tell you that toll roads in Kazakhstan are really cheap in comparison to other countries, especially Europe. So, but do not expect like the same quality of highways. Uh, but anyway. Uh, it's better than nothing. I have just received a message, an SMS, uh, with the notification Welcome to Kyrgyzstan, because the border with the Kyrgyzstan is really close here. So, and um, just be prepared that uh, as, you as you're going to be driving, sometimes you'll be out of coverage. The uh, the there is no service. No, вот легковая там 20 километров. 20 tenge, 20 local tenge local currency per uh, 20 kilometers. Yeah. You see that, uh, as you can see, that the mountain range is quite high, and the highest peak um, at the border with Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan in China is uh, six uh, six thousand. Uh, 900 something meters uh, the elevation above the sea level so that's almost 7,000 and uh, the summits preserve snow all year round even in summer you can see that the peaks are covered with snow and that's uh, of course beautiful and we are uh, continuing uh, our way to Shimkent and then but no, but the, this one, these ones are not seven thousand. But there is a peak which uh, it's called Tenshan. Well, you can Google it. It's quite high. Um, what else? Kazakhstan boasts vast territories, but however, not so many foreigners are even aware of its location on the map, <laughs> which is funny, because Kazakhstan takes up. A lot of space and it's um, located in the central of Eurasia and it's a big big country and uh, however uh, the population is 19 million in total and we have only three big cities of national um, meaning which is uh, Almaty that used to be uh, a capital originally since the independence of Kazakhstan when the Soviet Union broke and then it was um, removed to Astana uh, and we have another city that is a big one uh, it's Shimkent and we're gonna be driving past it well uh, the Almaty is the biggest one in terms of population and Shimkent is the biggest in terms of territory, so in terms of square kilometers. Uh, the population is Almaty uh, around, in Almaty is around 2 million, in Shimkent it's 1.3 uh, and in Astana is 1 million. So these are the biggest cities in Kazakhstan. Um, the rest are not so populated. And uh, the territories, especially in the south, are, you, you know, as you can see, the landscapes, the scenery uh, is rather boring and um, there is not much to see. You have to drive long distances from one uh, touristic attraction to another and uh, that's something you have to be prepared to. What else? So we uh, just recently we noticed there was a sign of an ancient settlement here on the, somewhere nearby and there are many gas stations and the infrastructure is quite developed so this is a popular route a popular destination and uh, despite the fact that there is a lot of land in Kazakhstan it's not really agricultural it's not cultivated as you can see the fields um, uh, are not used to grow crops there is there is a police car the 
police car that we just saw, they had cameras that's, vi that's video on the roof, on the top of the roof. And uh, the, that's video registration. They're not, not even gonna stop you. So you will just receive the ticket. <laughs> You'll be notified <laughs> that you, you were fined for speeding or whatever. And uh, that's strange, that's funny because we are now, uh, we have entered the toll road and the speed, uh, the highway, the toll road and the highway and uh, the speed limit here um, is supposed to be one, 110 kilometers per hour but then all of a sudden like out of the blue from nowhere there is a settlement like a village or something and boom then the speed limit is uh, decreased to 60 and immediately there is a pol the police um, controlling and there was a situation one case when um, a resident of uh, Russia was uh, driving back home through Kazakhstan to Russia and he was not paying attention along the way to such things like the change in the speed limit and that there is actually some kind of control even like if they don't stop you there's uh, video recordings and stuff like cameras uh, so and he got fined what was the amount two hundred dollars like in total and uh, so you have to be really attentive like as you are driving sometimes it's better to always uh, follow all the traffic rules and always maintain the you know the, the speed limit that is prescribed for for this part of the road uh, but anyway if you like speeding just be careful <gasps> and there is an eagle well eagles are typical for this Predators. They, these are uh, these birds are predators, and they are quite big in size. Uh, now we are approaching uh, Taras, the city, which is really close to the uh, to Kyrgyzstan, and it's interesting that Taras is considered to be one of the most ancient uh, cities in Kazakhstan, Ichi. Um, also has an international airport, um, a railway station and bus stations and everything. So it's uh, quite an important city for this country. And it's considered to be like the uh, cradle of the Muslim um, culture in Kazakhstan. And it uh, also used to be part of the Silkway, of the Great Silkway very well known around the world and that uh, was really important at that time back then. The city was um, conquered many times, uh, it was destroyed, like almost completely destroyed in uh, around 1720s and it has been renamed many times and now it's known as Taras. So the population of the city is not that big, it's only around 426 or something like that. Well, let's say 400 and a half thousand people. And by the way, there is an interesting fact about Kazakhstan. Uh, Kazakhstan uh, takes the second place in terms of the territory that it possesses after Russia. Uh, in the territory of the post-Soviet Union and um, the, it, the density of the population is the lowest in the world so we are now uh, taking a detour around Taras we're not going to drive through the city we don't need to waste uh, time and get stuck in traffic there so um, more interesting facts about uh, Taras city. It used to be named as Talas, uh, 
which was the name of the river in this region and as I have already mentioned it was part of the uh, Silkway and it was a very very important uh, place and city with a fortress with city walls with uh, four gates into the city and the fortress was surrounded by a moat in the center there was um, um, a residence of the ruler and basically the city uh, looked like a huge market um, the different languages could be heard in the city because um, due to the uh, you know due to this part being part of the Silk Way it was a transit point for many traders vendors and uh, um, so people from China and um, uh, Arabic countries uh, would meet in this city and the current name Taras um, can be translated as scales which really describes the essence of the city so according to the navigation we have 336 kilometers left um, to Tur Turkestan Turkestan yeah. so if you want to learn more about Kazakhstan here are some more facts about Kazakhstan the territory that the the length of the border between Kazakhstan and Russia is known to be the longest border in the world and it comprises 7,500 kilometers and um, Kazakhstan takes ninth place in the world as the largest country without an access to the ocean Kazakhstan is uh, known for the production of apples it's the cradle of apples and tulips in the mountains uh, in Almaty city we have the highest uh, skating rink in the mountains and it was well known and famous during the Soviet Union times some world records were established at that skating rink Another interesting fact about Kazakhstan is that we there is a city uh, it's called Baikonur and maybe you already know that it's um, a space station that's what it's called space station Russia is renting the territory of 111 square kilometers until 2020 uh, 2050 it's rented to Russia And uh, the, the price is just very cheap, <laughs> the, the, rent, the rent is very cheap. It's Balhash Lake. And what is unique about that lake is that half of it, the water is salty and the other half is not salty. And this separation is visible, it's very uh, apparent and the scientists still are trying to explain how is how this is even possible but the fact is the fact we just made a stop at gas energy gas station so there is a shop a store you can buy snacks and use the restroom we are now really close to Shimkent and what we see here is the plantations of grapes Interesting. The scenery is quite picturesque here. Just in the foot of these mountains, there is a lot of greenery here. Um, we are now uh, approaching Shimkent, and I wanted to tell you some facts about the city. Well, besides those that I have already mentioned. So the name Shimkent can be translated garden city as a garden city the city is actually 2202 years old and that was officially recognized and acknowledged by at the UNESCO conference in uh, 2019 
so it's one of the most ancient cities in Kazakhstan are up to 300 days uh, in the year are sunny days and the climate is really warm uh, in summer the average um, temperature during the day is plus 31 and in 2015 uh, the highest temperature the record was uh, established in terms of the temperature here uh, it was registered 49 plus 49 Kent is well known for the production and like agricultural um, contribution to the country. Uh, it provides uh, the whole country and other neighboring countries with uh, fruit, berries and uh, different vegetables, um, watermelons, melons and even cotton. People in Shimkent are very hospitable and they like to receive guests and uh, the table and um, really treat they really treat their guests and there is a saying that you cannot feed your guest with words so the food in uh, Shimkent is also well known to be very tasty and um, but yet cheap at the same time Have a look at what's going on on our radiator grill and it's good that we have this net otherwise all of that would have been in the radiator. So now we are really close to Turkestan city and from here we can see this kind of high scrapers but not really but the buildings are really tall. We are surprised to see this because the population of Turkestan is only uh, 200,000 uh, people. Um, so it's uh, rather small. And here you go. This uh, like tall buildings looks like a business center or something like that. Uh, Yes, on the sides of the road you see these are uh, the screens to reflect the sound coming from the uh, traffic. Famous for cultural and historical legacy and um, I know that I remember from school like when I was a kid uh, we had uh, excursions um, to this city. In total it took us around 12 hours uh, from Almaty to here. We can see that there is a mosque, a new mosque is being built and in general the city it looks um, empty because there are lots of new buildings and it's really easy to notice that they are really building as if they are building the city from scratch. It looks clean, rather clean, and uh, the infrastructure is developed. There's everything, banks, um, malls, shopping malls, everything. The streets are quite wide. Yeah, maybe later when the, the city really uh, starts expanding and the population will grow, uh, maybe these streets will not uh, manage, not, will not cope with the number of cars that will be at that point. hotel a big one some monument <laughs> uh, maybe that's a Khan no because I've read on the internet that there is a, a tomb of Ablai Khan and Ablai Khan was a 
an important figure in the history of Kazakhstan. And this is our hotel that we're going to be staying uh, tonight. We have finally arrived. And uh, if you want to check the room with us, just stay tuned. We'll show you in a bit. We're going to check in. Oh, nice! I like it actually. Beautiful. Really cozy. Uh, very like traditional, authentic Kazakh. The decor and everything. Здравствуйте. The personnel is really hospitable. The breakfast is from 7 to 10.30. That's our room on the second floor. Oh, first thing I have to tell you, it's very spacious. <laughs> and the bed is, it's really, it's huge. It's not queen size, it's king size maybe. And the TV is big. Uh, well, the view, <laughs> There's uh, nothing amazing, nothing beautiful, but guys, look at that. That's a very big room. There is a compliment. Oh my God. Isn't that nice? Silkway. Let's see what we got here. Well, the bed is enormous. Everything is very clean, shiny, and looks new as well. Uh, we have these curtains, bathrobes. Everything is really, really new and very fresh and clean. I love it. And spacious. <laughs> I mean, this is something hard to find. And the closet, it's also huge, really enormous. <laughs> this closet. <laughs> you can sleep inside. Oh my goodness. Yeah, 